Hi, and welcome to the Success Path Show, where Christian business owners share their tips for success to show you how to succeed more effectively with your kingdom goals. I'm your host, Violet Dietrich, and I am beyond excited. We have an amazing guest today. His name is Bobby Petrocelli, and Bobby's story is one of personal triumph and hope following a devastating tragedy in his life. Bobby often shares how he fought through the darkness to triumph, how he drew upon his faith and friends, to, and how he came to love again. As a high school teacher and coach, his love for youth inspired him to take his dramatic story to audiences nationwide. Bobby's the author of several books, including 10 Seconds Will Change Your Life Forever. He's also a motivational speaker who shares with people of all ages about the power of their decisions and how to build a strong foundation for their lives. Bobby's been featured on many Christian TV shows, including, including the 700 Club, and most recently, he was on Life Today. Welcome, Bobby. Hello, Violet. How's my sister doing? It's good I'm, to see you. I'm honored to be here. Yes, and I am actually so honored that you are on my program. I know you have a lot of experience, a lot of value that you can bring to the audience. And can you just share a little bit about your story? I know that there were some dark times in your life. Now you do, you know, God has brought you from a very dark place, but can you kind of talk about what happened in the in those dark times and how that started? Well, absolutely, Violet. So I grew up in New York City. Um, I tell people I grew up in South Brooklyn, New York. So I'm a Southerner, just so you know, from South Brooklyn. But in all honesty, I went out to all Roberts University, a Christian university in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I wanted to go there since I was a kid. I wanted to follow in my Uncle Rico's footsteps, who was a pro baseball player. I played baseball there. Um, wanted to go into some form of ministry, education. That was my heart. I meet my wife there. Her name was Ava. She was from Texas. We hit it off. I moved to Texas, the Houston area. And long story short, we're married for two and a half years. We move in our first house. We're in the house for several months. I coached in a football game. I come home late that night, have a little dinner with Ava. Being Italian, she understood the importance of making a good Italian sauce with some meatballs and everything else. Mm -hmm. So after devouring that, and I'll make sure people know with a side note, I do talk with my hands to catch the spit. All Italians spit when they talk. And also, <laughs> I do have a cousin, Vinny. Please know that I really do have so a cousin. You, you really do. Okay. <laughs> He's my closest cousin I grew up with. But I go to bed that night and literally, I tell people all the time, Violet, life does not happen one day at a time. Life happens one moment at a time. Mm. My life was changed in one moment. A drunk driver crashed through my house seriously injured me, ran me over completely. It's a miracle I was flipped up on the hood of the truck, went through the next wall, and I end up in the dining room window. My wife buried under the truck. Physically, nothing happened to her. The sheets and the mattress wrapped around her face and her body so tight, she suffocated. The paramedic said it took her 40 minutes to get her out from under the truck. She was so encased in the sheets and the mattress. My life was changed in one moment. My life was changed forever in that moment. And the good book does say, in this world, you'll have tribulation. God does not send evil. The enemy, the devil, comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. Come on. God comes to give abundant life. To me, the way the system of the world, Violet, is set up, if God was able to stop something without working through us and our choices and decisions, he would do it. Why in the world would he allow bad to happen? Of course not. Mm -mm. But the reality is somehow when um, Adam and Eve surrendered their authority to Satan in the very beginning, as we learn, literally the only way that God's able to work is he works through the particular system that he initially set up. Well, guess what? When Christ came, that system got restored to us through Jesus Christ. Amen. So he wants us to be brought back to the place of Adam and Eve, how they were created. And the simplicity of it is he gave us the greatest gift in the world. He gave us a son. If there was another way of doing it, he would have done it. But on top of that, 
He gave us the Holy Spirit to help us to live the life we're called to live. And to anybody who watches this and listens to this amazing program and what Miss Violet is doing, my sister is doing, know that apart from the Holy Spirit, I can do nothing of God. So if I'm encouraged to love, to forgive, to be kind, to be generous, to overcome adversity, I can't do without the Holy Spirit. And I am a living example. And I'm still learning every day. And my sister Violet is learning every day. We need the Holy Spirit to overcome the work of the enemy that comes against us. The word says, apart from me, you can do nothing. But the word also says, I can do all things through Christ, basically through the Holy Spirit that strengthens me. And that's how I could be sitting here now. That's how Violet. I've spoken more than 6,000 times in 30 years. I've authored and co-authored books. This is one of my newest books called You Matter. It doesn't look awesome. the way to somebody, but I always show people, you matter, you matter to God. You are treasured by God. You are adored by God. And you know what? If you didn't have great value, he ain't sending his son to die for you if you're a mm. piece of dumb. No, you're of great value in his death his crucifixion, his abuse that he went through. And here's the kicker, sis. His resurrection gives us that power to live the life we are called to live and overcome brokenness. That's why when Jesus was on the earth, he made it so clear. Wait a minute, Pharisees, Sadducees. You're going after the sin and behavior of people. I'm not condoning it, but there's a deeper meaning. Those Mm. people are hurt. They're wounded. They're rejected. They're traumatized. They're broken. It's the sick that need a physician. And I want to be healing to their brokenness because then if their brokenness is healed, their broken heart is healed, they'll see themselves, me, others, and the world differently and live the life that I've called them to live. That's right. Amen. And I love that you say that it's not God that brings on these terrible things that happen. Because God is a good God, and it is an enemy that comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So, Bobby, what happened after um, your wife passed away? Well, let me say this of what you said, then I'm going to continue. So watch this. Joe, my sister's husband, Joe, is becoming a great friend of mine. He's phenomenal. So watch this. Could you imagine, and he would never do it, but I want to use this as an example, to use God as an example. Could you imagine? Joe comes up to you, punches you in the face, bear with me, breaks your jaw, and then he comes up and prays for you. Oh, Lord, I pray that you heal the jaw. What? No. That's not God. God's not schizophrenic. Excuse the expression. Let me hurt you first, then I'll heal you of the hurt that I hurt you with. No. That's why he says I've come to give abundant life. But in saying that, what you just asked me, sis, I realized, let me show you this because I want to feed off of what you said. This Mm -hmm. bag represents our hurt and our pain, okay? Mm -hmm. These glasses represent us. If I take the glasses and I put them in the bag, Mm -hmm. the simple question I'll ask you, sis, while my reading glasses are in the bag, are they being used for the purpose they were created to be used for while they're in the bag? No. Well, Mm -hmm. guess what? If I pull them out of the bag, then I can put them on and use them. Well, guess what? When Satan hurts us, breaks us and wounds us he wants to keep us in that hide Mm. us in that bag and therefore we can't live the life we're called to live jesus said as clear as the day in this world you'll have tribulation okay you're going to be rejected you're going to be scolded you're going to have tribulation things that are going to come against you by the enemy but he says be of good cheer I have overcome the world. So basically, I'll pull you out of that bag so you use for the purpose you were created to be used for and not be covered up in that bag. So when this happened to me, the very first night, sis, I'm laying in bed surrounded by so many people visiting from Lakewood Church where John Osteen was the pastor. Joel is now the pastor, his son. I went to school with the Osteens. Ava was best friends with Joel's sister. They started showing up. I had all the kids from Santa Fe High School in Santa Fe, Texas, where I'm actually not far from Santa Fe right now. For those, I have to show people, I'm here in Galveston. You can see the water. 
I'm down by Galveston. Oh, and I amazing. love to and meditate and pray. But that very first night, sis, I'm praying this prayer. God, I know you tell me to forgive this man. I don't even know what I'm about to go through. Ava's dead, sis, for three hours. I said, God, you're the only one who could give me the strength through your Holy Spirit to forgive this man. Because I'll be honest with you, sis, I want to lay hands on this man and prayer had nothing to do with it. <laughs> there was no prayer involved. I wanted to send this man to meet Jesus real quick if my flesh got in the way. But right away, the spirit kicked in showing me, here's what I taught you, Bobby. Unforgiveness never gets you to live the life you're called to give. You know what I tell people all the time, Violet? You never see anything good. You never see a life, a family, a relationship, a marriage get better when unforgiveness is at the center mm. of that life, that marriage, that relationship, or that family. Unforgiveness brings death, devastation, rejection, destruction. That's why I'll say this again. You matter. It doesn't leave your it behind. Everybody has an it, sis, where we've been hurt, broken, and wounded. Mm. If I let that it control me, I'm not going to live the life. I'm sitting here talking to you actually in a car. There's a rear view mirror. If I spend my whole life looking in the rear view mirror while I'm driving, I'm going to crash. I could glance at the rear view mirror where I've been, but I don't live in the rear view mirror. I have this big windshield that shows me where I'm at and where I'm going. And the reality comes down very simple. I determine where I go with it by allowing the Holy Spirit to work in me through me and helping me to come forward. Once again, apart from me, you can do nothing. I can't do this. So the simplicity of my prayer is, Father, I can't even begin to do this without your help. And even when I mess up, sis, the more I'm tuned into the Holy Spirit, the more he'll put on my heart. You know what, Father, I repent. You know, the way I talked to that person out of a little anger wasn't the best. The way I was acting or reacting to somebody because I felt hurt was not the best you had for them. And you know, Lord, I know I don't feel beat up. I feel forgiven because my whole life I felt so beat up that God's mad at me. He's ticked off, sis. I dropped the ball. No, he loves and adores me. He doesn't condone wrong, but through his spirit, he gives me victory over that wrong. Amen. Definitely. So you were able to forgive the the driver and what happened after that how did you come to um overcome the darkness through that time and once again it was as i shared earlier and i want to expound i'm so proud of you for bringing this up because this is so vital sis because here's what happens Everybody looks at the big moments. But well, right now, as I'm talking to you, it's basically 1.30 in the afternoon Central Standard Time. I don't have 1.45. It's not here yet. Why am I worried about 1.45? All I have is right now. Mm -hmm. I don't have 1.15 when we basically, you know, started talking before we started this program. I don't have that. You don't have it. It's in the past. We're already 15 minutes older from when we started the program. Well, here's the point I want to get at. I learned one moment at a time. Because people would say to me, sis, all the time, Bobby, you got to take it one day at a time. And I look at them, what? Right. I can't get through the moment. How am I getting through the day? But then I realized, if I, like you mentioned one of my other books, 10 Seconds Will Change Your Life Forever. If I can get through the 10 seconds. Hmm. Wait a minute. I just got through 30 seconds. I got through a minute. Sis, I got through three minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes. Oh my goodness. I'm doing better when I took it one moment at a time. Mm. Well, guess what? That's what life is about. How many lives, not even in a negative way, in a positive way, sis, how many lives have been impacted by one moment? Because of something somebody said, I like to go and I have to make a confession to you. I like to go to the Dollar Tree, okay? <laughs> and I like bubble gum. I got to uh -oh. go Bobby likes to eat bubble gum. Uh -oh. well, there's a woman in there that was on the cash register and she was all nervous because the way the customer before her treated her. Hmm. And I looked her in the face. I said, you know what? You are an amazing, incredible, priceless person. Hmm. 
I love your hair. And I joke with her a little bit like I would joke with you. Hey, how about donating some of your hair to me? I'm losing my hair. I could use a little extra. She started laughing. She goes, you know, you told me how beautiful my hair was. Thank you for making my day. I happen to have one of my You Matter wristbands. She didn't mind it. I took it off. I gave it to her. She goes, you have no idea. You just made my day. I felt so defeated by how the person, the woman in front of me, in front of you, excuse me, treated me. And you know what I tell people? I don't say that in an arrogant way. Oh, look what I know. God gives us moments. And then I walked out the door. How long did it take me to have that little conversation with her? Not a whole day. It started with one moment. And she said, you have no idea. She was starting to well up with tears. The cashier behind the register was starting to cry because she goes, you have no idea how much this helped me. And I always say this to people. The people we come in contact with, whether it's in a supermarket, a Walmart, a Target, you never know what they're going through. Your kind word, your kind action can kind of help them get rid of that it that's trying to control them. The biggest fear we all deal with, sis, is the lack of love and the fear of rejection. Mm -hmm. Well, what could I do to help somebody not feel rejected and to feel loved? Because I want to feel loved and not feel rejected. And when I tune into the Holy Spirit, I feel the help and the comfort that the Holy Spirit brings. Amen. And Bobby, as you know, um, these episodes are to encourage those people that have been chasing after their dreams, but they spent maybe all of their money, maybe they're in debt after trying this and that and thinking, God, I thought, you know, you wanted success for me. I thought you, this is what you had planned for me, but I failed. And maybe they do feel that rejection from God and the lack of love from God and from others because they haven't been able to accomplish the goals that they've been set out to do. So what would you say to, to them? Well, first of all, God is their biggest fan. God has not failed them. Okay. One thing I always ask people to do is as we start to approach this, it tells us in Galatians says, God will not be mocked. What we sow, we're going to reap. If I mistreat somebody and then bad comes my way by me mistreating them, it's like, God, why did you let that happen? God's going, wait a minute, you mistreated them. That's why it happened. Or I told you to go out this door, but you went out that door. So I always ask people, do some self-examination through the Holy Spirit. Maybe what could you have done different? But here's the key. Think about this, sis. When we focus on fear and anxiety and work, I always ask people, have you just made your situation any better by focusing on those things? Mm -hmm. And they go, no. I go, so then why would we focus on them? We don't have those things. They're in the past. We don't have the future yet. It's in the future. All I have is right now. I am robbing myself of peace and joy. And hear this kicker. All oh, people grab this. The word says in his presence Amen. is the fullness of joy. Hallelujah. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Yes. So here's what I'm learning, sis. The more I'm in the presence of God, the better I'm going to be. The more I'm led by the Holy Spirit and I hear the voice of God, the better I'm going to be. The less I do it, the worse I'm going to be because the flesh will never do things of God. And to add to that, I know you heard me share about the bummer lamb. I need to tell that story real quick. Every once in a while, a baby lamb is born. The mother rejects it, throws it away, pushes it away. Mm. The shepherd takes it, tries to bring it back. The mother pushes it away. The shepherd finally brings the baby lamb in his house, begins to raise it. When it's old enough, he brings it back to the mother. For some reason, she now receives it and loves it. You know what happened to that baby lamb? It just became born again because mm. it got restored to who it was created to be. But here's the best part, sis. When the shepherd comes to the flock to take them out to the field, to feed them, to put oil on their head, to give them water, and he calls to the sheep. The first sheep that run to the shepherd and obey the shepherd and follow the shepherd are the bummer sheep because they know the voice of the one who healed, oh. delivered, restored, and resurrected them to who they're supposed to be. So to everybody watching, what my sister is doing, and I'm teaming up with her, we're here to tell you that Jesus wants to resurrect what the enemy has stolen 
and give you hope, give you peace. Oh, yes. Give you joy that you will yeah. overcome and be restored to who you're to be and what you're to do. Amen. Wow, that is a beautiful story and powerful as well. And Bobby, um, you said that you're offering, which is very generous of you, this free book to the audience of the Success Path show. How can they get the, the book, You Matter? You know what I'm going to do? The first person that reaches out and says, I want a free book, I'm going to send them a free book. Just so they know that I'll also send them a couple wristbands and I'll send them a few other things I have for them to bless them and let them know we want to bless them. But BobbyPetroselli.com, 10seconds.org, the youmattermovement.com. And and what can you give us a little snippet of what the book is about and what the so audience would So here's my favorite chapter. I'm gonna even tell you my two favorite chapters. The first one is who do you think you are? You ever hear that expression? You usually hear it in a negative way. It's like, who do you think you are? No, I'm saying it in a positive way. Who do you think you are? How do you see yourself? How do you look at yourself? How do you value yourself? What I have on the wristband is VIP, value, identity, purpose. You know what that stands for? VIP, value, identity, purpose. When you understand your value, you got an identity and a purpose that nobody else has. But here's my other favorite chapter, okay? My other favorite chapter is, it, you know, there was a song that came out when we were younger, sis. I want to know what love is. Okay. I want you to show me. Foreigners sang the song. Well, guess what? Not only do you and I scream out, Lord, I want to know what love is. Please show us. We have the world screaming out to us, sis. Hey, Mr. Christian, Miss Christian, I want to know what love is. I want you to show me. And the only way I can show them the real love of God is through the Holy Spirit. I don't say this to be arrogant or rude. I promise you, the feedback I get from this book, people tell me all the time, it impacts and changes their life because all of a sudden, the first chapter is, who do you think you are? Another chapter is this moment, talking about the power of every moment. And then of course, I want you to show me, I want to know and experience that love. I'm tired of experiencing rejection and not thinking I'm good enough. Father, we need that. And I tell people, I'll say this last thing, sis. When I come to the Lord, I come to him as a little child. Dad, I'm scared. I'm concerned. I'm worried. I messed up. Or I don't know what's going on. Help me to be tuned into your spirit mm. to know what's going on, to hear your voice, to sense your presence, and to be led in the direction that I know you have the best. You're always speaking to me. I'm not always tuned into what you're saying and I wanna be tuned in. Amen. And Bobby, what do you say to those people that kind of are thinking, well, of course, Bobby's gonna be happy and living the abundant life. And he feels that God loves him because you know he's been on TV shows. He goes around the world, you know, spreading this positive message. He's connected to all these, you know, big time influencers. But how about me? I'm nobody. You know what I tell people all the time? No. I mean, I still battle every day. Life is moment by moment. There's still times the enemy will whisper in my ear and I feel rejected and I don't feel good enough. And am I doing enough? And that's why I always say to people, I may go out there motivating and encouraging others, but I need motivation and encourage myself. I come before the Lord all the time saying, Dad, I don't feel loved right now. I don't feel that I've done anything positive. And then it's amazing what he'll show me in this little moment or an email or a text message or a phone call that lifts me up. And I, I realize more than ever, when God puts somebody on my heart, 99% of the time, when I reach out to them, they'll go, how did you know that? How did you know when to call me right at that moment? Well, you know what? We all need those little things. And I would say to those who are watching, I, you know, I go through, you are doing a great show. You go through your up and down moments. We all do. All I can say is the more I'm in his presence, the more I experience his joy. And then I have that joy to overcome stuff. Doesn't mean I haven't still gone through many things and I constantly go through stuff all the time. But what happens is the more we've gone through things and we've seen the victory in those things, the more confident we have in that victory and we know what has worked. Let me say this to you out there. Hear me carefully what I may say 
or my sister Violet may say about what has worked in our life. And I'm just sharing out of my heart what works. And definitely when I'm in the flesh, it does not work. I'm going to always go down the wrong path when I'm in the flesh. It's that simple. Wow. Yeah, that's true. So always stay close to the Lord. Make sure that you're in tune to Holy Spirit. Be led by him and live out of overflow is what I heard. Amen. Absolutely. Live out of overflow. You know, just like somebody who's watching this, they might have a cell phone that it, it's turned on, but it's a dark screen because they haven't clicked on the screen. Well, guess what? There's still a signal being sent to that screen. They don't know what that signal is yet until they click on. Well, guess what? The Holy Spirit's always talking. You know what the Bible says? I was sharing this with a friend this morning, Violet. Every good and perfect gift comes from the Father above. There's people in the world who are not so-called serving Jesus, that they do things of God. They don't even realize they're doing it of God. Because right. God pursuing them. And for some reason, they tuned in and they listened to him. And they did that great thing. They may not give God credit, but God still worked through them. It's really that simple. I mean, and all I could tell you is, <coughs> excuse me, we have complicated it. It's more mm -hmm. simpler than we make it. If I'm led by the spirit, I will not fulfill the things of the flesh. If I'm led by the flesh, I will not be in the spirit. And therefore, I'm not going to do the things of God. God's not going to. If God tells Violet to go to the left, as I said earlier, and you go to the right, God still loves you. He can't bless that area you went to because that's not where he was leading you. That wasn't the best he had for you. He'll still love you. He'll still be there for you. But it's like, sorry, Violet, this was not my best for you. Now, come on, let me recalculate and get you back to where I wanted to get you back. Recalculate. I remember that all the time when, when we first got GPSs. I would hear, recalculate. <laughs> Get you back on the right path. God is always screaming out, recalculate, recalculate, recalculate when we go wrong. He never gives up on us ever. Hallelujah. And praise God for that. And please let us know what your biggest takeaway was from this episode. And if you want to see more episodes like this, go ahead and subscribe and like this video also. And that way we can bring you more programming like this to encourage you wherever you might be in your Christian journey. I appreciate you watching. Please follow Bobby. Bobby, can you tell us what is your favorite social media um, way where they can follow you? I would say in social media, I mean, of course, they can go to my website, bobbypetroselli.com. But the, the one I go to the most is Facebook. So just look up Bobby Petroselli. I'm also on Twitter and Instagram. People follow me there too. But the number one of all the social media that I do the most with, sis, is Facebook. It's just, you know why? Because I'm not as smart as you, and I'll be honest with you. I'm technologically challenged. <laughs> so I have to go to the easiest form of social media to keep up. That's why it's funny because I do so much stuff with kids, sis. And I always have to ask the kids, could you please help me out? I'm a little lost on this. I don't know what I'm doing right now. And I, I'm not afraid to admit it because here's the key. The last thing I'll say on this is we're all a special part of the body. You know what I'm saying? And I say to people, they may like, please hear this, sis. They may like or love Bobby Petroselli and the things Bobby Petroselli shared. But guess what? You have everything to do with Bobby being on this show. And you have just as much of that impact and that empowerment because we're both on the same team. We might be different genders from different parts of the country, different backgrounds, but we're on the same team. And together, even through this episode, we're impacting people. And those who help to promote this, they're also part of us impacting people. That's the whole key of the body of Christ. We do it together. We can't do it alone. I do what I get to do and impact people because others who believe in me, just like I believe in others. And I'm honored to do this show with my sis because I believe so much in what she's doing and how many lives are going to be touched. Yes, thank you so much. So like Bobby said, be a part of the team, like this episode, spread, you know, this episode around so that, you know, we can impact more people. We appreciate you being here. We love you. See you on the next episode and God bless. God bless. You matter.